Hi and welcome back to Beach Bubbling. Today we're going to do a first timer's guide to Cuba. We had never been so these are some things that we wish somebody would have told us before we went. Hopefully if you watch this it'll make things go a little smoother for you for your first time to Cuba. So here's some things of what to do and what not to do and some things to bring and some other tips so hopefully it helps. So the first one we're going to tell you about is do not exchange your money at the airport or the bank. I know that probably sounds stupid and counterintuitive but those are the two worst places to exchange your money that we know about anyway. You should go through your bellboy, go through somebody at the market. Um, who did you say was on the, the, the tour? The tour guide on the bus. Yep. We met people while we were there that got their money exchanged, some of it anyway, at, with the Air Canada guy on their tour bus going to the resort. He was giving them 50 to 1. So not the best, but way better than the bank still. Yeah, we got 70 to 1. So that was really good. And then we had people that were in between that. But if you want your money to go as far as it possibly can, just exchange the minimum amount that you need to at the airport. And you really don't need to exchange any at the airport because they'll take Canadian and US money anyway. So I don't know why you would need feel the need to exchange there, but if, if you do, just exchange the minimum amount that you need to and not a penny more. For your transport to wherever you're going yeah. maybe? Yeah, you can still pay with that in the Canadian, so I don't know why you yeah. would take the hit on it there. But anyway, that's tip number one, probably the biggest one. Number two would be cabs. Um, cabs are all negotiable. Uh, usually they would ask 10. We'd say, oh, that sounds like a lot and start walking away. And then they'd come back with five. So you we know, didn't go very every far. every time. I don't think there was a time that they didn't lower their price like that. Yeah. Mm. So don't just ask the cab and get in and negotiate your price before you get in the cab too yeah. uh, you don't want to just have them say yeah five and then not agree to it and get in and end up somewhere where he's gonna go oh i thought it was closer than this i want 10 or 15 or just make sure you definitely agree upon a price yeah. That's Before just not you get Cuba. In. That's no matter where you travel. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a rule for us. We, we'll, what are we paying to where we're going? We understand that. Then we get in. We, we don't get in and start moving until we know what we're paying. Yeah. Number three, negotiate everywhere, actually. <laughs> um, except the restaurants where the prices are posted, obviously. But the market, the prices were very negotiable as well. Um, we didn't even really try. We'd just say offer five and then they'd say no seven or eight we'd start walking away and they'd come back and say five was good <laughs> yeah if you watch the market video when we were looking for a license plate we had a five dollar canadian on us and that was all the canadian we had so that's why we we're going home <laughs> that's why we're, we're gonna pay five or nothing and uh that's why we stocked the five and as we're walking away you see, you see in the video she calls hey lady she calls her back <laughs> five was okay but we, it's not like we're trying to be super negotiators that's all we had canadian on us and the next one is pay in pesos. Yeah. So a, a few times we found with the exchange we were getting anyway, um, a drink would cost the equivalent to $2.80 if we paid in pesos. But if we only had US or Canadian, it was five. Yeah, we didn't mention it, but at when the Pina Colada place in our last video, we didn't have any pesos left. That was our last day. And Full day, it yeah. It was a buck, 180 pesos is what it was it was, was about 280 if we exchange it at the rate that we exchanged at yeah um but versus, versus five dollars like they wanted five bucks per drink and as good and as I it think was that uh, was whether it was canadian or u.s, US too yeah. they, um <laughs> which was weird that's us. just one example how you're getting screwed though like if you went through a restaurant and compared what you would pay at the bank rate versus yes a good exchange rate you'd be mortified at how much money you're leaving on the table so yeah always use pesos if you can um over canadian or us we found anyways yep number five are things that you're going to want to bring with you um, number one would be bug spray the sand fleas were kind of ridiculous at times on the beach mosquitoes were killer at night and at dusk yeah we had a friend uh, cindy that saved us and gave us some mosquito repellent yes so. thank <laughs> and then uh what else do we got on my list here we've got snacks you're not you're gonna go into a store and you're gonna get some types of snacks but if you like to snack on your salties and your chocolate things you're not gonna have much variety at all pack that stuff with you um we were told to pack a lot of spices when we went 
So we hoarded stuff from restaurants. Every time we had takeout, we had like a whole pack. Baggy. Of baggy of spices and stuff. And I don't think we barely used it. Yeah, we didn't use a lot of it. And that might have just been the resort we were at where we ate, but we never took it out on town with us. We actually didn't find it to be that bad. Um, but some people like to bring spices with them. The other thing you want to bring are any meds, like like even like heartburn meds, Imodium. That kind of stuff's going to be harder to find. Um, and if you do find it, it's going to be a lot more money there. Yes. Yeah. One thing you're not going to want to bring is a drone. Just leave it at home. Uh, there's a guy from Canada that had his and he was in Havana. And he put it up and they saw him doing it. Uh, they arrested him, took his drone. He was two weeks get, with the Canadian government's help getting him out of Cuba. Uh, weird enough, they did give him the drone and the footage back. Like I said, he was doing wrong, but you don't want to go through that. Uh, sometimes, I think we heard that they confiscate them at the airport as well. You have to be a Cuban citizen to yep. fly a drone there, so... Yep, so just leave even it Unless you are, just don't bring it. Yeah, if you bring it, it you just think of it as disposable. If you bring it home and get your footage, you were lucky. Just leave it at that. Also vapes. So I've heard from two people, one person successfully brought vapes in, and then someone else, they confiscated them at the airport, but then he did get them when they left, so... Speaking Unless you really need them, <laughs> maybe leave them because you might not be able to bring them to your hotel or resort or Airbnb anyway. Speaking of things at the airport, actually, this is kind of random. We were, we didn't talk about this, but uh, lighters. How many lighters were you allowed? They made you go through your whole... One. One lot, uh, lighter per person. person. We had two? Or? I had two. She had two? and One was in my suitcase and I tore apart my suitcase looking yep. for it and took it they had the lineup and security was backing uh, up while we're trying to find the second lighter so just know that you're only supposed to bring one and if you if they found hers in the radar or not radar but metal detector or whatever extra scanner, scanner. Yeah. kleenex or toilet paper so bring it with you around once you're there uh whether you bring it with you from home or from your hotel or whether you uh buy some um it's not always guaranteed everywhere you go uh, sometimes you have to tip for it in places, and then other places uh, just doesn't have it. So if you're a lady and you like to have it, then throw some in your purse or in your pocket before you head out on the town. Yeah, we were at a nice restaurant that didn't have toilet seats, to put it in perspective. So, yeah, yeah. it's not always guaranteed. It's not always guaranteed. Number eight is do not go into the airport unless you have to. Um, unlike other airports, when you walk through the door, you can't get back out. doesn't matter if you've gone through security or not. You walk through the door, you're stuck in there. So definitely, you're going to want to find one if your plane's delayed before you go in there. Um, I would recommend, or we both would, I think, that you get the VIP lounge on the way home. But you have to book that ahead of time. So no two days ahead of time minimum. You'll have to book that. You'll get uh, free food and free drinks for, I think, it's two, two and a half hours when you're you there. You can book it through your tour rep if yep. you flew Delta, WestJet. Yep, any of the big uh, Air Canada, any of the tour guys, when you go for your orientation at your place, if you have that, yeah. they'll book it for you. Um, any hotel will book it for you, I, I think, too, ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, we did a video on the airport. Uh, you could look through our Cuba playlist and you'll see that. There's a lot more information there if you want to, to pursue that. The last one is just go. Um, we avoided Cuba for years because we heard so many negative yeah. things about it from friends. Um, the food is gross, the food is bland, you're going you to get sick, you won't find anything to eat. And these um, are from people that keep continuing to go back, but they never painted it in such a light that... We had looked at it because the price, for Canadians anyways, very cheap place yeah. to go in the winter to somewhere warm with beautiful beaches. I wish we would have went sooner, uh, like 20 years ago. We would have um, had a lot more vacations because we could have afforded to. Yes. We start going a lot sooner. So if you so have that's reservations my, about That's going my there, number one tip, I guess, yeah, next to the money is just go and see for yourself. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I mean, you can go twice to Cuba for what you could probably go to Jamaica for. We love Jamaica. Maybe three times. <laughs> uh, or at least three to two. So that's going to wrap it up for the First Timer's Guide to Cuba. These are things, like I said, we wish we would have known before we went. Uh, we hope you found this useful information. If you did, give it a like below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Share with anyone who's going to Cuba. Yeah. Uh, and we hope this helped. Yeah. So I guess until the next time, cheers. Cheers.
And I don't know, you got anything else to add to this? Nope, hope this helps someone. Yep, until the next, oh shit. <laughs>